Welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 183 days, Ukraine stands strong against the forces of the Russian invasion. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky informed that yesterday, for the first time in history, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant stopped. It happened because the last working line of the plant's power return to the Ukrainian power system was damaged by Russian shelling. The emergency protection of the power units worked and diesel generators were immediately activated to provide energy to the plant to support it after the shutdown. Russia has put Ukraine and all Europeans in a situation one step away from a radiation disaster, said the president. He added that due to the incident, the occupied areas of the south of Ukraine lost electricity, water supply and sewage. Zelensky stressed that Ukraine is doing everything to prevent an emergency scenario, but international pressure is needed that will force the occupiers to immediately withdraw from the territory of the Zaporizhia power plant. The International Atomic Energy Agency and other international organizations must act faster than they are acting now, said the president. Volodymyr Zelensky informed that he discussed the situation at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant with U.S. President Joe Biden during a phone call yesterday. Zelensky said that Biden fully supports the need to return the plant under Ukrainian control and provide for the International Atomic Energy Agency access immediately. The president of Ukraine believes that this can be done in a matter of days, before the occupiers bring the situation to an irreversible point. They also discussed Ukraine's further steps towards victory over Russia and the importance of holding Russia accountable for war crimes, reports Interfax Ukraine. Zelensky again thanked for the unwavering U.S. support for Ukrainian people, security and financial. In turn, Biden noted that the U.S. will continue to support Ukraine and Ukrainians in their fight. First Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine Yevgen Yenin informed that on August 24, when Independence Day was celebrated in Ukraine, Russian forces shelled 58 settlements, reports Suspilne. According to him, this is a significantly higher number of attacks than usual. As a result of such attacks, dozens of people were killed and injured. Among such attacks was a missile strike at the railway station in the village of Chaplin in Dnipropetrovsk region. The rescue works there were completed yesterday. As a result of the attack, 25 people were killed, two of them children, reports Novenarnia. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz visited the Putlos military training ground and met with soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine who have been trained in Germany, reports Romanske. He promised to continue supporting Ukraine with financial resources as well as with weapons. Scholz reminded that Germany had already supplied Ukraine with a large number of effective as well as heavy weapons, including 15 Gepard anti-aircraft systems out of 30 promised. He reiterated plans to also supply modern equipment that is capable of using radar technologies, for example, for reconnaissance of enemy artillery positions, as well as, for example, to protect the airspace of an entire city like Iris-T system. At the same time, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock said in an interview with CDF that the continuation of German arms supplies to Ukraine is complicated by the fact that the German army is experiencing a shortage in its own equipment, reports Interfax Ukraine. Nevertheless, she confirmed plans to send weapons to Ukraine already this autumn, including the Iris-T air defense systems. According to the German media Bild, Prime Minister of Ukraine Denis Mugal will visit Germany, where he is scheduled to meet with German President Frank-Walter Steinmeier on September 4, reports Ukrainska Pravda. The General Staff of Ukraine informs that the enemy tried to advance towards Bakhmut, Donetsk region, but without success, reports Unian. The Russian troops are focusing on holding previously occupied areas in the Slovensk direction. 
the Comeback Alive charitable foundation that focuses on the support of the armed forces of Ukraine informed that since the beginning of the full-scale invasion and as of August 22nd, it received donations totaling 4.2 billion grivna, which is over 113 million US dollars and 28 million US dollars in cryptocurrency, reports Interfax Ukraine. This makes Comeback Alive the largest among similar funds in Ukraine. Recently, they announced plans to open a separate office in the US to work with the local audiences. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine invited Pope's representative to express their disappointment with the recent words of Pope Francis about Daria Dugina, Russian propagandist and daughter of Russian chauvinist and mind behind the current Russian aggressive policy Alexander Dugin, reports Ukrainska Pravda. Daria Dugina was killed in a car explosion last week near Moscow. On Ukraine's Independence Day, August 24th, Pope Francis said about Dugina, quote, I think of the poor girl who was blown up by a bomb that was under the car seat in Moscow, the innocent are paying for the war, unquote. The statement caused a public outcry in Ukrainian society. The Ukrainian Foreign Ministry expressed its surprise by the Pope's decision to mention in the context of the Russian-Ukrainian war the death of a Russian citizen in the territory of Russia, with which Ukraine has nothing to do. The ministry pointed out that since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, the Pope has never paid special attention to specific victims of the war, including 376 Ukrainian children who died at the hands of the Russian invaders. Our Patreon supporters get access to a cool new series on wartime life in Ukraine. To join the club, follow the link in the description below. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine. Thank you.